In this episode of the Builder Studio, we're gonna be showing you how we built this DIY shoe cabinet using some Osborne components and some locally sourced materials. This project features Osborne's cabinetry panels, bun feet, and some custom lumber options as well. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Before we get started, let's take a look at some of the materials that we're going to be using. Now we have poplar for our main box as well as our face frame. Uh, we're going to take that down to one inch. It's a little oversized right now. Uh, our overall project dimensions are 34 by 29 with a 36 inch walnut top. Uh, we also have some uh, pine board that we're going to use for our shelving uh, on the inside of the cabinet. And then we're going to also be adding some of our cabinetry panels. So we're going to take a look at a few different methods in this video. But to start, let's go ahead and take our lumber to our bench top planer and get that all the same thickness. Then we can hop over to our router table and get ready to glue it up. Now the depth of our cabinet box is going to be 16 inches. So we need a 16 inch panel, but our bench top planer only supports up to 13 inches of width. So we're going to go ahead and plane two pieces for each panel, jump over to our router table and get those jointed. And then we can glue those up to our overall 16 inches. So now that all of our lumber is down to one inch thick, we're gonna go ahead and run our outside panels on our router table. So we're using our reverse joint bit as you've seen us use in previous videos. If you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial on how to set this bit up uh, on your router table, I'll leave a link above as well as in the description. It'll take you through the process and show you some of the measurements to keep in mind. All right, so so far we've got the material for our outside panels planed down. We've ran them through on our router table and added our reverse joint profile to it. So now we're ready to glue these up. I've already picked which boards I want to go together and tried to match the grain as best as possible before routing them. We're just gonna take a bead of glue and add it into that deeper groove there. Just a, a good bead. Then we're gonna add one on the flat groove here just to get coverage on both edges. Try to get them as flush as possible. They're a little oversized, so we don't have to worry about them being exact. And we're just looking for good squeeze out all around. Now we're gonna add one more clamp over the top here, just to make sure that we're not getting any kind of bowing. So now that our boards are glued up and dry, we're ready to cut them to our final dimension. So I've got my panel clamp to my workbench, and then I've got a straight edge clamp to my panel. This is a really great system if you're looking to get some accurate cuts with just a circular saw. All you need is a good straight edge and a few clamps, and you can put something like this together in no time. Now to attach these, we're gonna be using our brad nailer, but there are a number of options that you could go with in terms of attachment. You could pre-drill and install screws and then add a plug at the end. You could also even miter the corners if you would like to do that. So this is the bottom of our cabinet. This is where the bun feet are gonna go. Um, so I just laying this over just to get a good look at exactly where we're gonna put our brad nails. Okay, so now that we have our main box assembled, let's go ahead and cut our face frame boards and we'll get those put on as well. All right, so this is the overall storage part of our cabinet done. We've also got our face frame installed. Now this is a really sturdy base for the rest of our project. The next thing on our list is to get our interior shelves installed. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at how to do that. Now the first thing we need to do for our shelves is go ahead and take some measurements on the inside of our cabinet. Now we're gonna have three shelves in this cabinet. So I'm just gonna roughly go where I think my shelves are gonna go and just pull a width on each spot just to make sure that I'm getting an accurate measurement. So we're right at 32 inches wide on the inside of our cabinet, which is what our shelf boards need to be cut to. Let's take a look at the material we have for our shelf. So we picked up this pine project panel from a local hardware store. Since we're going to be standing our shelves, this is a good option for us, but they also have these in paint grade lumber as well. Now this panel just happens to be the exact width that we need for our project. It's right at 16 inches wide. It's also slightly over 96 inches long, so we're going to be able to cut all three pieces out of this one panel. And it was a very cost effective option for our shelving. All right, so we've got our shelves cut out. We're also gonna be cutting out some scrap pieces right at 16 inches too. 
These are gonna be used as nailer strips on the inside so we can tag our shell boards to them. Okay, so before we move on to installing everything into our cabinet, we're gonna send our milled lumber to 220 grit, then we're gonna pre-finish everything, including our cabinetry panels and bun feet, and get ready to install this all together. Before we install our shelves on the inside of our cabinet, we're gonna install our bun feet on the bottom as well as add some pocket holes to the sides and front so that we can install our top. Now we're using one of our squat bun feet for this project. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking that line out. Now we're just gonna pick where we wanna put our feet on the bottom of our cabinet and then we're gonna pre-drill into our bottom board just to make sure that we're not gonna split or crack any of that wood. Um, and then we're just gonna install a screw from the top straight into our bun foot right in the center. It's gonna be hidden by the face frame as well as the shelves, but if you wanted to add some wood filler or a plug to that and paint match it, you could. All right, so the last step before we install our shelves is to attach our top, that way we've got enough room to work with. So I'm just gonna attach with the pocket holes that we made earlier. All right, so we're ready to install our shelves and our nailer strips. Now our bottom area is gonna be eight inches tall to the next shelf, and then the rest of them are gonna be six inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out eight inches. So the bottom edge of our shelf needs to sit right on that mark. So we're just gonna install the nailer strip with the top of the nailer strip right on that mark. And that'll put us flush and exactly eight inches of a space between the bottom of our shelf and the bottom of our cabinet. We'll do the same thing on this side. Then we'll just take another one of our nailer strips and we're just gonna tack this in. All right, so I'm gonna slide my shelf in and just make sure that we're nice and level there. And that looks really good. That's a really good fit there on that shelf. And then when our backer goes on, it'll be seamless and you won't see that nailer strip. All right, so we're ready to install our cabinetry panels. Now these panels are from Osmond Wood Products. If you're interested in learning more about these or other ones that we offer, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can check that out. Now we're using some hinges that we picked up from a local hardware store. These are hidden hinges that hide under the bottom of our panel. So what we're gonna do is mark out on both sides, even spacing and then install them there, lift our panels off, and then tack them into our panel. We also picked up a couple pools from the local store that we're gonna install right here in the middle. All right, so the last piece of hardware we have are these little latches for the doors. Now what these are gonna do are just hang right there on the bottom of our face frame, and then the other piece will go on to our panel. Whenever you close that door, it's gonna make sure that it stays latched and shut and that it's not gonna open accidentally. All right, so the last step for this project is to install our backboard. Now we picked up this sheet of hardboard from our local hardware store, but really any kind of luon or thin plywood would do depending on your preferences. So we're gonna measure this out to 34 by 29 inches and then we'll install it to the back of our cabinet using our stapler. All right, so we're gonna slide our shelves into place and then get ready to put our backboard on. All right, 
so that's gonna wrap it up for this project. I think this cabinet turned out great. This is a great multi-use piece that you could use for many applications. You could put your TV on top and have more of a smaller uh, entertainment center if you have a smaller space. You could also use it in your bedroom for some storage for shoes, things like that. If you're interested in the product used in this build that were from Osmond Wolfrise, I'll leave a link to the cabinetry panels as well as the bun feet. I'll also leave a link to some information on some tabletops from Osborne, as well as our custom quote process. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment if you have any ideas for future builds. And we'll see you next time in the Brewer Studio.